Welcome to another episode of ProSoft Technology Video Training. In this video, we're going to go over the process to set up and configure the ICX35 cellular radio. In this scenario, we need to send and receive data to pumps out in the field, miles away from the control center. We'll be using a SCADA to talk to an open VPN server to multiple ICX35 HWC radios attached to the PLCs at each pump. We'll also take a cursory look at some of the other features offered by the ICX35. So let's begin. When you receive the radio, it comes with the default IP address of 192.168.0.250. In order to configure the radio, we need to have access to that web page. You can set the IP address of your computer to match the subnet of the ICX35's default IP, or you can change the IP address of the cell modem using our ProSoft Discovery service. This is a free utility that you can download from our web page. What it does is scan the network looking for any ProSoft product that uses a web page. And once the ICX35 HWC appears in the ProSoft Discovery Service, right click on the radio and choose Assign Temporary IP. This will allow you to get to the radio's webpage long enough to set up a permanent IP address. Once you've assigned a temporary address from your subnet, you can close the utility. Now you can open up any web browser click on the address bar at the top and enter in the IP address that you just assigned, followed by colon 8080. And this will open up the configuration page for the ICX35 cell radio. When the page opens, you'll be prompted to put in a username and password. By default, the username is admin and the password is password. Once we log in, we're taken directly to the radio status page, and this presents us with a variety of status information and general statistics of the ICX35. The first thing we'll do is set a permanent IP address on our subnet. To do this, we'll click on the Configuration tab. We'll look at the Basic Configuration page. Here you can give the radio a name, and we can also set the APN. The APN is a name or number issued to you by your cellular provider. You'll need one to connect to the cellular network. Now under LAN settings, we can set the IP address of the modem. In my case, since I know my temporary IP is available, I'll go ahead and use it as my permanent IP. So 10.12.5.120. End device IP address is for situations where you have any singular end device, such as a PC or a PLC, and you want to route directly from that device to other devices on the network. It's essentially the same as IP pass-through. In my case, I have a PLC that I want to route data to and from, so I will enter its IP address here. With this done, we can now go down and click Apply. Whenever you click the Apply button under any of the tabs here, the ICX35 will go through a reboot process. Be sure that you've actually made whatever changes you want to make on that tab before hitting Apply. So now the ICX35 will reboot with the new IP address. Once it's done, we'll enter the new IP address and log in. For me, it's the same IP address, but you would use whatever IP you entered, of course. And now we will change the username and password. This is a basic measure, but also a very important one to ensure the security of your network. To do this, we'll click on the Administrator tab, and then we'll go to the Access Control page over on the left here. Under Web Login, click on the User field and enter a specific username. Then click on the password field and give it a new password. And confirm the new password. And to set the new username and password, we need to click apply again. And when it reboots, it will be configured with the new login settings. So be sure to write them down. Once it's back up, we'll log back in and continue the configuration. 
Now we can configure the modem to suit our application, which is to allow pump jacks in the field to communicate with a SCADA system using our OpenVPN server. For this, we will need an existing OpenVPN server waiting for client connections. We'll be configuring this radio as a client, connecting to the OpenVPN tunnel. Under the Configuration tab, we'll select the Advanced page on the left, and here we can see and configure all the features and functionality that the ICX35 has to offer. Each of these sections can be expanded to get at the configuration options. We'll expand VPN and in the drop down menu, we'll select Open VPN. TLS renegotiation time is the length of time in seconds that the modem will wait to renegotiate a new key exchange. I'll set it to zero. This will keep the connection constantly updated and secure. The server IP domain is the IP address for the server linking all the client modems together. In my case, the server address is 10.12.5.200. Port is the port being used by the OpenVPN tunnel. The default is 1194, and this is typical and will work fine for us. Then we have our credential file section. These files determine who we are to a server, what the server is, and how the communication is handled. For each of these, you will browse for and select the appropriate file and then upload them to the ICX35. You would get all of these files from your network administrator or whoever is setting up your OpenVPN server. Note that the custom config file that you see at the bottom would only be used if you have a unique or customized VPN network. Once you've selected each of the required files, you can click Upload, and this will send the certification files to the modem. And note that it will not reboot the radio like hitting the Apply button does. It will just upload the files. And these files will authorize the ICX35 to communicate with any other client attached to the OpenVPN server. And now we can hit apply to set our VPN configuration. This will reboot the radio again. And with that, we are finished configuring the client modem to connect to our OpenVPN server. One last thing to note. There are conditions where the connection status indicator in the ICX35's configuration page may seem to contradict the status that is indicated by the WAN LED on the front of the modem. This is because the LED on the ICX35 shows the physical connection status of the modem to a cell tower, whereas the status indicator in the user interface shows the state of the logical connection, meaning the modem has negotiated with the tower and obtained an IP address. The modem could potentially succeed in connecting physically to a cell tower, but then fail to obtain an IP address. In this instance, the LED on the front of the ICX35 would show a connection, while the user interface would show no connection. And that does it for this training session. If you have any questions or would like more information on this product, visit our website at www.prosoft-technology.com. Until next time, happy training.